So EA thought it would be a good idea to have their lead developer hop on Good Morning Madden yesterday to discuss zone coverage. It went about as well as you might expect. Let's go ahead and get into it. What is up, guys? Zam from the Zam on YouTube channel, and I'm not going to waste too much of your time. We're going to go ahead and get straight into this interview. It's a really good one between Kralo and Clint Oldenburg discussing the state of coverage in Madden 22, what changes might be on the horizon, community feedback, and EA's approach, and what they think about their coverage right now in the current state of the game. So I'm going to be playing this particular video. I'm going to go ahead and hop over into a full screen view of this. And I am gonna be pausing just a little bit because I think it's gonna be really important to kind of um, talk about the things that Clint is bringing up, uh, potentially debunk some of the things that he's talking about and also uh, provide, uh, you know, kind of this raw feedback. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get straight into it. Like usual, you know, just, just a note of text doesn't do it justice. And so we wanna have this discussion with our players. And there's three primary things that we want to talk about with our players today. Number one, we want to acknowledge and receive the feedback that our players are giving us around pass coverage on the defensive side of the ball. Number two, we want to be transparent with our players about what we plan to do about that feedback and talk a little bit about our plan to address that. And then number three, give a reason behind that plan. Talk a little bit about where our game health currently stands and how that's impacting that plan. So those are the three primary things that we want to talk about today. Cool. Well, I know, you know, with uh, title update two, um, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, I think players were kind of expecting some level of update kind of in title update two, but I know you guys have been always taking a very cautious approach. And I do know that there's some fixes kind of already in play. I um, mean, you guys have been looking at that. Can you talk to us a little bit about that today? Yeah. So when we take, when we take all this feedback in around pass coverage and really start digging in to figure out what players are talking about, what we found is there's, you know, a handful of specific behaviors that frustrates players because those behaviors have become predictable and they're not taking away the things offensively that they expect. So um, some of those things are like uh, corner routes against cover three deep zone or flat zones, um, things of that nature. They're very, very specific. However, we're gonna get into it in a second. We wanna be very careful not to completely swing the pendulum around relative to game balance this soon. And one of those uh, issues is actually fixed prior to worldwide launch on the 20th of August. Mm -hmm. A couple days prior to that, we did fix an issue with cover two deep zone. I'm gonna try to be respectful. Um, that's not true. It's not true. They did make some changes to cover two, but it is catastrophically broken. Pretty fixed. We wanna be very specific and precise with what we roll out in a series of title updates coming here in the next several weeks. Um, and the first one's gonna be on cover cover three primarily. We're gonna go tackle the biggest behavioral issues in cover three. We're gonna roll that out to players. Then we're gonna monitor. Then we'll start focusing on other zones like cover two and cover four. And it's gonna be uh, more, more of a steady, precise, targeted approach to address the, um, the game feedback that we're getting from our players, but also take into account the game health data, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So that's actually really, really encouraging to hear. Um, one of the things that I think is the most frustrating aspect of playing defense in this year's game is that outside thirds and also technically outside force and cover four drop, basically let corner routes break right across their face and get open underneath of them on the sideline. And that's when they're not in conflict, meaning that you're not using a route to pull that zone back and then the corner route breaks out underneath of it. We're talking simply put, go call X, you know, uh, Z spot and go in gun bunch and um, just basically put the tight end on a streak, which is gonna be the middle thirds responsibility to cover three and then throw the corner route out underneath. So what they're saying is that they're gonna take a swing at that. That's been one of my chief complaints with the game. And then as you guys also heard, it sounded to me like they're talking about hard flats being an issue as well. Um, as we know, the, the quick throw to the tight end is the most frustrating thing to guard underneath in the game right now. Tight end uh, ins and outs out of the backfield are really, really problematic to defend. So um, those two fix right there that he just alluded to are actually really, really good things. So, um, you know, one and one here. I, I thought that the comment about the cover two was completely, uh, completely wrong. And I think that what they're talking about right here with an upcoming uh, change to cover three could actually be pretty beneficial for the game. But let's go ahead and get back into it. Yeah. So um, sorry about that. Um, so when we're talking about kind of like, 
you know, you know, you, you mentioned some of the things that you guys are working when it comes down to fixes. Uh, one of the things and questions that I had is like, you know, when you guys are looking at kind of like the data that's in the game and from a game health perspective, what is some of the stuff that you guys are looking at from from that tuning standpoint, right? Like, what, what are you trying to be mindful of specifically? Yeah, and, and, and that's exactly where I want to go. So when, whenever we get feedback, the first thing that we always want to do is look at the stats that we're getting from gameplay and try to match it up and see where the biggest problems are because the feedback, as much as we value it, it's not always exactly clear on what needs to be done. And that's where the data tries to put another puzzle piece in place. So looking at game health, it's actually fairly strong on the defensive side of the ball here in this early part of the Madden season. I just want to give a, a couple uh, data points that we're looking at that are informing this plan moving forward. So first of all, average yards per passing play in Madden 22 is very, very close to what it was in Madden 21. Across all the different passing plays, that average ranges from flat year over year to a maximum increase of two yards per play. If you look at the deep, that's not statistically insignificant. Uh, two yards per play over the course of four snaps in a set of downs to get 10. That's eight out of 10 yards. That's a big deal. And I feel like that's kind of being swept under the rug as minimal. Let's just keep listening. Defensive side of the ball, average yards allowed per coverage type. So that's taking, you know, cover two, cover four, cover three, breaking it down and looking at what's the average yards allowed per coverage type. That ranges from flat year over year to a max increase of one and a half yards per play when compared to Madden 21. One and a half times four is six, guys. That's half a first down 10%. over that compared to the 2020 real world NFL rate, which was only 2.2%. So we're almost 8% higher than the real life NFL in terms of interceptions thrown. And that number is actually slightly up from Madden 21. And then- I apologize for talking over the beginning of that. What you guys missed in that comment was him saying that in the NFL, the average of all quarterbacks on interception rate is 2.2% of passing attempts are intercepted in the NFL. And if you were to compare that to Madden, you're gonna see an average of roughly 10% in Madden. Now, my counter argument to that is they're painting a picture of, well, in Madden, it's a lot harder to throw the ball than it is in real life. Uh, what, 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 what gets your ass in the rain? And I would argue the exact opposite, the exact opposite because Let's leave physical ability out of that. I can't go out there and make the throws that Patrick Mahomes makes. I can't even make the reads that Patrick Mahomes makes in real life. But even still, the game being so much harder in real life to pass than it is in Madden, you're seeing a 2.2% a, a for those quarterbacks. Those quarterbacks have spent their entire lives on the chalkboard, on the seven on seven on uh, field, in scrimmages, in games, learning coverages, in the film room, studying, learning. I can go ask my neighbor down the street who plays Madden once or twice a year and is technically like the 98 plus percent uh, of players that buy the game. That's about their level of engagement with the game. Us hardcore people, you guys on Twitter, on YouTube, on Twitch, uh, you guys are the hardcore. So naturally our view of what the game is is gonna differ from some guy that buys it at, at Target and only plays it you know, week one and then maybe plays it again or has it on at the Super Bowl party when all of his friends are over there and they just sit down and play a, a few games and don't know what they're looking at. The reason that people throw five times more interceptions in Madden than what you see in real life is because they can't tell you what a cover two is. They can't tell you what a cover three is. They can't tell you what match quarters and how match differs from palms and what cover three cloud hell. I put a tweet out yesterday that said, uh, cover three cloud buzz and sky, what's the difference? Well, I, that blew a lot of people's minds because they didn't know that you know the B in buzz or the S in sky or the C in cloud refers to the player that is in the flat, corner, safety, backer or linebacker. So, you know, there's a lot of disconnect with most of the 99, 98% of players that buy the game don't know anything about the coverages and that's why they throw interceptions. That doesn't get you off the hook as it pertains to how bad your coverage is in the game for the players who do know what coverages do, what coverages are supposed to stop what route combinations and what route combinations should be specific coverages. And then you go back to the point that I just made a little bit ago where I said, hey, you know, cover three is broken and corner routes just run across the face of an outside third. And you can, you can kind of mold that together 
what he just said and what he said they're gonna fix, those are butting head statements of what's actually going on in the game. Out of one side of the mouth, it's things are fine globally. I believe he said the health of the game is good. And I honestly don't know what game he's playing uh, if he feels that way. I really, really don't. You watch anybody who plays this game on YouTube, on Twitch, the first thing you look at is, wow, is there any defense in this game? Um, and, and two, then you're, you're saying that, you know, oh, hey, we, we understand that there's some catastrophically bad zone drop uh, guys covering air. Which one is it? And, and I feel like I'm trying to be fair here when I say that. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of keep listening here to what uh, Clint is talking about with the game. And the, the most powerful one that I want to tell our players about Average score per team in online head-to-head -head play in Madden 22 is 24 points per game. That's almost exactly the same as the NFL 2020 average of 24.7. And for players who are less, less experienced, that average actually drops down to 14 points per game. I know I just threw a lot of numbers at you and our players. Sure. That feeds in exactly to what I've just spent the last three minutes talking about. For players that are less experienced, they're seeing a 10 point uh, less average score per game for those players, down from 24 for somebody who does play the game a little bit to 14 for somebody that is casual. Now, again, think about the vast majority of players that play this game. They don't play this game at a high level. They don't know coverages. They don't know what plays to call. They call so coaching suggestions. They don't know how to play maker. They don't know what any of the mechanics are. They barely know how to hot route. They don't know how to motion. I run a strategy site. I'm telling you these things are true. I know this. I make my living playing this game, teaching people these mechanics, and you would be shocked at the number of people that are mind blown when I teach them how to motion or pl motion a player. Stuff that I don't even put on the YouTube channel, uh, but I honestly should apparently put on the YouTube channel, blows people's minds. So you're talking about the, the heavy, heavy weight of all players that are playing this game being that guy, 14 points per game. So in their mind, they're thinking defense is fine. The vast majority of our player base struggles moving the ball. But then when you take a look at the other comment where they talk about players that kind of know what they're doing to more advanced players, they're scoring right on par with the number of points per game scored by average NFL games. Here's what's wrong with that argument. The issue with that argument is that the NFL is a 60 minute game. The NFL is a 60 minute game. We are playing in the range of 16 to 20 minutes online. We're playing a game that is anywhere from one fourth to one third the length of an NFL game. And honestly, I'm not even sure the snaps are gonna be uh, one fourth to one third because we're dealing with an accelerated clock as well. So there's a lot of factors here. If, if, the, if the players that are actually good at the game are scoring the same output as an NFL game, but the game is a third to a quarter as long as the full length game, would that not indicate that offense is overpowered? Sure, yeah. But in a nutshell, what this tells us is it's actually a lot closer than um, than one may may believe if you're if you're seeing those behaviors that I talked about more frequently. So it's amazing what you can make out of statistics, guys. Targeted and precise than just throwing a bunch of stuff in an early title update and hoping that the outcome is what we hope. Got it. So at the end of the day, if, if I understand it correctly, when you guys are kind of looking at kind of tuning the game, there's always like this design. There's always like this vision of you know, how the game should feel based off of kind of like the real NFL, but then not just that, but then also looking at kind of how players play and then finding that balance from there to kind of promote the best kind of game health, correct? Correct. And we have to provide good game health and balance for all of our millions of players out there who love Madden. Everyone, everyone plays the game a little bit differently. Everybody has different skill levels and we need to make sure that our game is the most fun that we could possibly deliver for all of our players. I'm gonna call a spade a spade. That's a cop-out line from a franchise that claims their game is simulation. Taking co coverage and fundamental techniques of players and completely bastardizing them to the point that you could call any route combination against any coverage, you're gonna have multiple receivers running wide open. And anybody with a football brain, um, including the guy who leads the direction of the game, he played at an NFL level. And we know that deep down inside, it's 
got to, on some level, burn to see the way that a lot of the X's and O's go. Again, Clint is a very nice guy. I've met him. He is a genuine person. I like the guy. I just happen to passionately disagree with the direction the company that he works for is taking this game and the way that they're putting these guys out there to defend the product. Um, I think that it, it, it you can't sit there and say, we're trying to make the game as fun as possible for everybody who plays the game. Well, listen, man, target Timmy's going to run tight end attack every single year, and he's going to run wide trips for verticals every single year, regardless of what the coverage is like. Um, if they're saying that, you know, last year, a game that we all kind of viewed as man coverage one step ahead, it runs the routes for you and it does all these things for you. If we're going to view it in that lens, then um, we also have to understand that if if you're viewing those players as playing the same in your point of view right they say oh it looks flat to one and a half yards difference well target timmy's not not changing the way he's playing the game based off of you know the defense being hard or not so why are we really really going at those guys i think that you're going to see more players enjoying the game and if if the game somewhat represents what the game is supposed to be in real life and this is coming from a guy that sets up those cheesy blitzes and those cheesy one play touchdowns and all that right you know um th this is coming from a guy who you know wants the game to to at least somewhat represent the x's and o's you know we want coverages and that's one thing too is that comp, you know comp guys and simulation guys alike when they're unified on a topic you know you probably have something wrong with your game but i'm gonna try to talk less and let them uh, kind of finish here um so i know uh you know there's there's some changes in 22 that have impacted coverage can you talk a little bit about that uh specifically yeah so that's a that's a really good question we talked a lot about this prior to launch in terms of vlogs and deep dive videos sure, yeah. and whatnot, but um, there are some things that changed in other areas of gameplay that have impacted the perception of pass coverage that I just wanted to note. Uh, the first one and probably the most powerful one was we greatly decreased multiplayer catches to promote more user control on the offensive side of the ball. So in 21 and 20 and even prior to that, multiplayer catches were kind of that safety net. If you had a receiver one on one and you tried to do, uh, let's say, a rat catch or run after catch, uh, a, a multiplayer catch may, may match, we call it match, um, and that the DB could catch up pretty quickly to close that gap and cause a knockout. Same with aggressive catches, the DB could join in and, and cause that knockout. And so uh, multiplayer catches was uh, a safety net in some cases uh, that have been greatly decreased in Madden 22. Another one uh, is, a, is our next gen player movement that's made it a little bit more difficult for defenders who are out of position to recover and close that window. Uh, we also did some tuning to decrease drop rate on offense on the offensive side of the ball so more catches are being completed and then if you look at ultimate team specifically everyone who plays that mode deeply knows that those ratings are going to escalate over the year and so you're not seeing a lot of defensive back ends defensive back groups that are super elite in coverages yet as you're going to see over the next seven to eight weeks you're going to have ratings escalating from the high 80s into the low 90s, mid 90s, and eventually the high 90s. And that's going to also have an impact on pass coverage and defensive behavior as a whole. So basically what I'm saying is, is I'm giving you all this data and I'm giving you all these things that changed this year to tell you that that coverage is, is growing, it's evolving, it's going to evolve all, all season long so that we can provide a healthy meta and provide a very fun experience for all of our players. I think that's a very fitting way to end the video for Clint. Um, I Again, I'm very, very hard on the game. It's because I care. It's not because I'm, you know, an asshole. It's because I, I have a passion for this. I have a passion for the X's and O's. I've been through beta tests. I've been down to EA. I've done these things. And I understand that a lot of times when I talk about this game, uh, I'm sure that the developers feel like it's backstabbing for me to talk the way I do about the product. But when you've seen something happen and behaviors like this from the company line happen for so long, you can only kind of have so much of it before you get to the point where you're just like, this is really foobar, man. Like, um, it's great that they're attacking cover three and i'm going to be clear i think that the cover three fixes are going to make this game more enjoyable moving forward it's gonna be nice to see them guard corners hopefully they're not going to get sucked down by wheel routes and hopefully hard flats play hard flats um they make those simple changes i think that the game's going to be in a fine spot i just passionately disagree with cherry picking your statistics to kind of the word i use is gaslight the community that things are better than they really are I understand that you guys removed the two-man catch interactions and that you can kind of say, well, hey, we removed that because you guys wanted more control over your receivers. I get that. But when 
I post a clip of Jalen Ramsey, who is 99 zone and 99 player rec, like you alluded to with the in-game mutt stuff, giving up eight to 10 yards of space on a ball. A two-man catch interaction is not saving Jalen Ramsey on that play. And he is mid-game, or I'm sorry, end-game level mutt rated. Um, so, you know, that's going to be a problem when those cards come out in eight weeks, like you said. So, again, trying to debunk that myth that all of a sudden when the best mutt cards come out, things are going to be fine. And what does that do at the same time for the regs players who aren't playing with 99 everything teams? If the game has to be 99 everything in order to function correctly and we have to pay for those players in order to have them on our team, what does that say about the fundamental football of your product? And that is my challenge to EA that you guys need to answer moving forward. Again, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm really not. These are really, 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 they're, they're, they're perfectly fine to ask questions. They are. And, and I strongly urge somebody from EA, maybe it's in a further dev diary, deep blog, to come out and answer those questions. Because I do think that while the, it's not Clint and Kralo's fault, I don't think it's either of their faults that the overall business model of, of Mutt is the way it is. I just think it's really crummy that regs gets cheapened out of football technique being the way it should. And then they turn around and say, hey, don't don't worry. Night Train Lane's 99's coming out in the in the Blitz at Thanksgiving, and you'll be fine when that happens. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. I want to know what you guys think in the comments section. I think this is going to be a really, really hot button debate. I think there's going to be people that disagree with me. I think there's going to be people that agree with me. I think there's going to be people that are going to absolutely flame. And I really don't want you guys to do that. I, I really, really don't. Try to keep it constructive. I know it's really hard sometimes. It's hard for me to stay constructive at all the times. I, don't, I certainly fail at it from time to time. But um, let me know what you guys think below. Make sure you subscribe here to the channel. We'll see you guys tomorrow with the next one. Until then, this is Ann. Get in the lab, Ann. Good luck.